Warmaster is a tabletop wargame rule set written by Rick Priestley set in the old world of Warhammer Fantasy. It is different from Warhammer Fantasy Battles in both appearance and gameplay. It is intended for 10 to 12 millimeter miniatures. The game is designed to focus on the general's ability to command rather than just his army's ability to fight. Games Workshop discontinued Warmaster in 2013. Warmaster Revolution is a fan-based second edition of the rules for Warmaster. Warmaster Revolution first started as a Czech community-based project, but has since evolved into a project supported by large parts of the international community. Warmaster Revolution exists as two PDF documents, Warmaster Revolution Compendium and Warmaster Revolution Armies, both edited by Alish, also known as Altic. The main aim of the Warmaster Revolution rule set is to implement the combat system from Warmaster Ancients, a second generation of the Warmaster rule system. Warmaster Revolution has some rules changes as well as modifications and additions to the army lists. There are currently 23 usable army lists, with a few more currently being tested. The rules and army lists can all be downloaded for free as PDFs at wwwwm revolution.com. Also, there is a free online army builder for Warmaster Revolution as well as other iterations of the Warmaster rule set. This can be found at www.wm-selector.appspot.com. Links for all of these will be provided below in the show description. Over the course of this video series, I will go over each section of the Warmaster Revolution rule set in detail. If you're interested in learning about Warmaster Revolution and seeing future Warmaster content, click the like and subscribe buttons below in order to get notifications whenever a new video is posted on this channel. Without further ado, let's learn how to play Warmaster Revolution. Page 6 of the Warmaster Revolution rulebook explains the scale of the game. A typical table represents many square miles, and each stand of figures represents hundreds of warriors along with supporting elements. Rather than individual warriors acting, movement and combat represents the overall effectiveness of units as a whole. An important piece of information to take away from this section is the manner in which missile units operate. It is explained that the 30 centimeter range that most missile units have does not represent the range of each warrior's weapon, but rather the ground the missile units can dominate around it. Warmaster Revolution is more about the generals and their subordinates' ability to command rather than the army's ability to fight. This aspect is represented by the command value of generals and characters, and their abilities to give orders. Warmaster Revolution uses six-sided dice, and occasionally will need a three-sided dice, which can be achieved by rolling a d6 and having the score rounding up. All distances in Warmaster Revolution are given in centimeters. They recommend, if you want to play in inches, to just divide the ranges in half. Also, pre-measuring is allowed, and players may take measurements at any point during the game. While nicely painted models make the game infinitely more enjoyable, don't be afraid to use blank bases to represent units in order to learn the game. It can be time-consuming for some to paint up an entire Warmaster Revolution army, and it shouldn't prevent one from playing when they are first starting out. In order to represent the myriad qualities of various warriors and monsters in Warmaster Revolution, each piece or stand is given three basic values. These values are attacks, hits, and armor. Attacks represent the number of dice rolled in combat. The more dice, the better at fighting the stand is, and the more hits it will be able to inflict. Hits represent the number of hits the stand can suffer before it is removed. Armor represents the chance of saving against hits scored against it. The value of 6 plus requires a d6 roll of 6 to nullify a hit. A 5 plus requires a roll of 5 or higher, and so on. A value of 0 means a stand has no armor and thus normally does not get an armor save roll. There are 6 unit types in Warmaster Revolution. Infantry, Cavalry, Chariots, 
monsters, artillery, and machines. Units with a missile weapon will have two attack values divided by a slash. For example, high elf archers have an attack value of 3 slash 1. The first number represents the number of dice used in hand-to-hand -hand combat, while the second number represents how many dice are rolled when making a shooting attack. We will discuss the shooting mechanic later on in this rule series. Command is a value that is found on your army's general and subordinate characters. Command is used when issuing orders to your army. Command values can range as low as 6 to as high as 10. We will discuss the command mechanic later on in this rule series. Armies always include a general and can include other heroes and wizards as well. We refer to these as characters. Characters consists of a single stand. Troops in Warmaster Revolution fight in formations of several stands of models glued to 20mm by 40mm bases. A group of stands belonging to the same formation is referred to as a unit. All stands in the same unit are always arranged so they are touching each other side by side, one behind the other, or contacting at a point. Up to four units can be temporarily placed together to form a brigade. We'll be covering brigades and their importance later on in the series. Not all armies play alike. Most armies have unique troops and special rules. You don't need to know all these to begin, but we will go into each army's special rules in later videos. A typical game begins with both sides deploying their armies. There are several ways players can mutually agree to set up their armies, and these will be discussed later on in the series. For now, both players can either secretly write down where their units will be deployed and deploy them simultaneously, or players can alternate placing one unit at a time, starting with the player with the most units. For now, armies should be set up at least 80 centimeters apart from each other. Next, each side takes a turn one after the other, starting with the player who rolls the highest on a d6. Players can decide to play for a set number of turns or fight until one side breaks and withdraws. A typical turn is divided into three phases in this order. The command phase, the shooting phase, and the combat phase. Each of these phases will be discussed in subsequent videos. After a player completes their combat phase, their opponent begins their turn in the same way, starting with the command phase and ending with the combat phase. It is then the first player's turn, and so on, until one side is defeated or the turn limit is reached. Once the battle is over, players add up the number of victory points they have scored. Victory points are scored based on the points value of enemy units or partial enemy units killed, or depending on the victory point objectives of the scenario if using scenarios. The various ways victory points can be scored will be discussed later on in detail. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to War Master Revolution video and are interested in learning all about this wonderful rule set. The next video in this series will go over the command phase. In the meantime, enjoy working on your Warmaster Revolution armies, and I will see you in the next video.